This video begins with a brief overview of health history taking, followed by the anatomy of the abdomen, inspection, auscultation, percussion, and palpation of the abdomen, percussion and palpation of the liver, percussion and palpation of the spleen, and palpation of the right kidney and aorta. We conclude the video with tips on describing your findings. You will see the examiner assess a healthy patient. In clinical practice, you may detect the same normal findings, or you may discover normal variations or abnormal findings. The health history interview is a conversation with a threefold purpose to establish a trusting and supportive relationship, to gather information, and to offer information. In the case of new patients, you will gather information that will form the basis for a comprehensive written health history. For patients seeking care for a specific complaint, you may prepare a more focused, problem-oriented history. In either case, you will record the patient's chief complaint along with common or concerning symptoms. Common or concerning symptoms relating to the abdomen and which are specific to gastrointestinal disorders include indigestion or anorexia, nausea, vomiting, or hematemesis, abdominal pain, dysphagia and or odenophagia, change in bowel function, constipation or diarrhea, and jaundice. Common or concerning symptoms relating to the abdomen and which are specific to urinary and renal disorders include suprapubic pain, dysuria, urgency or frequency, hesitancy, decreased stream in males, polyuria or nocturia, urinary incontinence, hematuria, kidney or flank pain, and urethral colic. By eliciting the patient's concerns before the examination, you prepare for an examination that is efficient and productive. Okay. With the patient's health history in hand, you are ready for the examination. Before beginning, let's review the structures of the abdomen. The abdominal wall extends from the rib cage above to the pelvis and inguinal ligaments below. The rectus abdominis muscles can be identified when a person raises both head and shoulders from a supine position. Palpation is easier lateral to these muscles. For descriptive purposes, the abdomen is divided by imaginary lines that cross at the umbilicus. These lines form the right upper, left upper, right lower and left lower quadrants. The abdomen may also be divided into nine areas. The three midline areas are the epigastric, umbilical, and hypogastric or suprapubic areas. The abdominal cavity extends up under the rib cage to the dome of the diaphragm. Most of the liver and stomach and usually all of the spleen are within the abdominal cavity. The normal spleen is mostly posterior to the left mid-axillary line. The kidneys lie posteriorly, partly protected by the posterior ribs. The right kidney is slightly lower than the left. To assess for kidney tenderness, you should be able to locate the costa vertebral angles. They are posterior to and below the twelfth ribs lateral to the vertebrae. The abdominal aorta which may be palpable in the upper abdomen, bifurcates into the iliac arteries below the umbilicus. As the iliac arteries pass under the inguinal ligaments, they become the femoral arteries. The renal arteries branch off the aorta in the epigastric area. The intestines fill much of the abdomen. The sigmoid colon and portions of the transverse and descending colon may be palpable as tubular masses. Except for a pregnant or gravid uterus, or a distended bladder, normal pelvic organs are not detectable through the abdominal wall. Before you examine the abdomen, 
Make sure that the patient has emptied her bladder. Lower the table flat. Then ask the patient to lie down and relax. Expose the supine patient's lower abdomen by raising the gown to about the costal margins and lowering the drape to the suprapubic level. Inspect the skin for scars, striae, dilated veins, rashes, and lesions. Inspect the symmetry and contour of the abdomen and note any peristalsis, pulsations, or masses. Also observe the contour of the umbilicus to look for signs of inflammation or hernias. Okay, everything looks fine. I'm going to take a listen. Okay. Note that, for the abdomen, auscultation comes after inspection and before palpation. This is different from other regional examinations, in which palpation precedes auscultation. In the abdominal examination, palpating prior to auscultation might distort the quality of bowel sounds. Listen for bowel sounds by placing the diaphragm of the stethoscope gently over the abdomen. Listen for abdominal or femoral bruise. Listen for bruise over the right renal artery. Aorta and left renal artery. If present, a brewery would sound like this. In a patient with hypertension, a brewery raises suspicion of renal artery stenosis. But most breweries have other causes. If you suspect arterial insufficiency in the legs, listen for breweries over the aorta, right iliac artery, and left iliac artery. Then palpate and listen over the right femoral artery and the left femoral artery. Next, lightly percuss the abdomen to assess the distribution of tympani and dullness. Tympani is a high-pitched musical sound that indicates a hollow space filled by air or gas in the stomach or intestine. Dullness suggests fluid or feces. Okay, let me know if you feel any tenderness. Okay. Now palpate all quadrants of the abdomen, beginning gently and saving painful areas for last. With your fingers together, place your hand flat on the abdomen and press using a light dipping motion. Moving smoothly, palpate all quadrants identifying any tenderness or increased resistance to your hand. Observe the patient's face closely for indications of tenderness or discomfort. If the abdominal muscles are tense, try to relax the patient and palpate gently again. Okay, take a deep breath in and hold it. Let it out. Okay. Having the patient flex the knees is sometimes helpful. Then, palpate by pressing more deeply in all four quadrants as you feel for any masses or tenderness. Try placing one hand on top of the other. If you feel a structure that suggests a segment of colon, roll it under your fingers in one direction, then another, and try to assess its shape. Here, the examiner notes the sensation of a mass in the lower quadrant. This would be an air-filled loop of bowel. To localize pain in the abdomen, ask the patient to cough, and then to show you where it hurts. Can you cough for me and then point to me where it hurts? <coughs> right here. Right there? Okay. Next, assess any guarding. Palpate lightly, then more deeply to see if applying pressure elicits tenderness or pain. Does it hurt if I press down? No. Check for rebound tenderness. Okay, I'm going to press down and then I'm going to let go and I want you to tell me if it hurts more when I press down or when I let go. Okay. Press your fingers in firmly and slowly, then quickly withdraw them. Watch the patient's facial expression and listen for any sounds of pain. When you let go. When I let go mm -hmm. it hurts? Okay. 
Pain induced or worsened by withdrawal is rebound tenderness, suggesting peritoneal inflammation. Percuss the span of the liver. From an area of tympany well below the expected liver, percuss up to the lower border of liver dullness in the right midclavicular line. Mark this spot. Okay, I'm going to make a little mark here. Mm -hmm. Then, percuss from lung resonance at about the nipple line down the midclavicular line to the upper border of liver dullness. Mark this spot too. Measure the span of liver dullness between your two marks. Here, it is about 7 centimeters. The normal span is up to 12 centimeters. Okay, I'm going to feel the edge of your liver, so bear with me for just a minute. To palpate the liver, place your left hand behind the chest margin and your right hand lateral to the rectus abdominis muscles and well below the lower border of liver dullness. Okay, take a deep breath for me again. Press gently into the abdomen, and as the patient breathes in deeply, try to feel for the liver edge as it moves down. If possible, let the liver slip under your finger pads as you feel its surface. You often need to try again, moving your fingertips closer to the costal margin. The hooking technique may also be helpful. Standing to the right of the patient's chest, place the fingers of both hands below the border of liver dullness and press in and up toward the costal okay, margin. Take a deep breath for me, please. Ask the patient to take another deep breath. This liver is not palpable. To assess for tenderness when the liver is not palpable, place your left hand flat on the right lower rib cage and gently strike it with the ulnar surface of your right fist. Do you feel any pain or discomfort? No. No? Okay. Now let's get you on your right side, so I want you to turn towards After me. you have the patient lying on her right side, preparatory to percussing the spleen, flex the patient's left knee. To assess the size of the spleen, percuss the left lower anterior chest wall in a lateral direction noting the extent of tympany. Tympany suggests that the spleen is not enlarged. In the epigastrium, you may hear the tympany of the gastric air bubble. Okay. Next, check for a splenic percussion sign. Find the lowest interspace in the left anterior axillary line and percuss there. Okay, take a deep breath. If tympany is heard, Hold it. ask the patient it to out. take a deep breath as you continue to percuss in the same place. Hold it. Hold when it spleen out. size is normal, tympany usually persists. Okay. Good. An enlarged spleen is considered unlikely. When the spleen is enlarged, tympany often changes to dullness. Dullness is a positive sign. It may be falsely positive, but its presence means you should perform careful palpation. Palpate the spleen to assess its size. With your left hand, reach over and around the patient to support the left lower posterior rib cage and the adjacent tissue. Place your right hand on the abdomen low enough to detect a large spleen and point your fingers toward the costal margin. When the patient takes a deep breath, try to feel the spleen as it comes down to meet your fingertips. Repeat several times, moving your hand gradually from the lower quadrant toward the costal margin. Normally, kidneys are not palpable. A right kidney, however, may be palpable in a thin person who is well relaxed. To feel the right kidney, place your left hand below the right twelfth rib posteriorly and press forward. Place your right hand in the right upper quadrant lateral to the rectus muscles. Now ask the patient to take a deep breath. Please take a deep breath. At the peak of inspiration, Press your right hand firmly and deeply into the abdomen and try to capture the kidney between your hands. Okay, let your breath out. Ask the patient to breathe out and then stop breathing. Slowly release the pressure of your hands as you try to feel the kidney slide back into its expiratory position. 
To assess the aorta, press the upper abdomen slightly left of midline and feel for the aorta's pulsations. In patients older than 50, try to assess the width of the aorta. Pressing with a hand on each side of it, try to estimate its width. Normally, in patients of that age group, it should be less than 3 centimeters. Okay. All right. Let's have you sit up again. With the patient sitting up, assess for kidney tenderness. And I'm going to examine the back here. Okay. Place the ball of your left hand on each costovertible angle in turn and strike it with the ulnar surface of your fist. Normally, kidneys are not tender. Okay. Just relax for a moment. Okay. A clear, well-organized clinical record, employing language that is neutral, professional, and succinct, is one of the most important adjuncts to patient care. For a healthy patient, your write-up might include a combination of language and charting. For example, abdomen is protuberant with active bowel sounds. It is soft and non-tender, no masses or hepatosplenomegaly. Liver span is 7 cm on the right midclavicular line. Edge is smooth and palpable 1 cm below the right costal margin. Spleen and kidneys not felt. No costovertebral angle tenderness. In summary, examination of the abdomen involves inspection, auscultation, percussion, and palpation of the abdomen. Percussion and palpation of the liver percussion and palpation of the spleen, and palpation of the right kidney and aorta. <laughs>